Hey guys, it's Elle here with Fight Bananas, here to preview UFC 281 for you. Um, so I'm just going to go through it just like we were doing the podcast. Um, I'm going to start with my best bet of the night, and that is Aaron Blanchfield by decision. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield is fighting Molly McCann. Um, we've seen Meatball and Molly have this uh, huge growth of hype recently from her spinning elbow knockout and her finish over Hannah Goldie. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that Aaron Blanchfield has seen the tougher, the tougher competition and prevailed in those situations. Obviously, we've seen uh, Molly drop some uh, fights to Taylor Santos, who's a very tough competitor, but overall, Blanchfield has beaten the better competition. Molly also famously struggles with her own takedown defense. While sometimes she's able to implement her wrestling offensively, her defense is not super sound, and that is absolutely Aaron Blanchfield's wheelhouse. Um, she, uh, we saw that in the Miranda Maverick fight. Her wrestling is incredibly high level as well as her control on the ground. And I think that Aaron Blanchfield is actually the more technical striker as well. While Molly does have the power advantage and she can be very aggressive on the feet, I think Aaron's technical enough to be able to keep the range, set up her takedowns, and uh, pull through with this victory. Um, next, I'm going to get into my underdog pick. So uh, lately, there haven't been a ton of great underdog plays on some of these cards, um, but there's one that I really like in uh, a very interesting fight coming up with Ottman, Azatar, and Matt Frivola. Um, Azatar is coming off of a 27-month layoff after his uh, bag of potatoes incident in uh, on Fight Island. And I I think the the ring rust plus just the, the step up in competition is gonna be is gonna be trouble for him. Matt Frivola is incredibly tough. We have seen him knocked out before, which is always a possibility with a guy like Ottman who has incredible power. However, Frivola has also have has wins over much tougher uh, tougher competition, such as Jalen Turner. And I think that the, just the pressure that Frivola can put on through three rounds, as long as he can stay safe and maintain the range, I think that's a great underdog play. Um, I'll get into my three fight parlay as well. And then at the very end, I'm gonna to touch on the main event. Um, in this three fight parlay, I'm gonna start with Montel Jackson over Julio Arce. So I really like both of these guys. They're both super exciting bantamweights. I love watching them. And Julio Arce has kind of become a little bit of a gatekeeper, not in a bad way, but I feel like a lot of people end up fighting Julio Arce on their come up. Um, and he, he does very well. He's an incredibly technical striker. He's great at setting traps. However, in the past, he has struggled with more physical guys who can, uh, who can actually, uh, who can power punch a little bit better than him. So I do think he's going to run into a similar story from Montel Jackson. So I'm taking Montel Jackson in this fight. Um, I think that the main, the, the best way to beat Montel Jackson is to implement your grappling. And Julio Arce is typically not very keen to offensively wrestle in his fights. So I, I think we're going to see Montel in that fight. Second leg of my parlay, I have Dominic Reyes over Ryan Stan. Um, Stan has just not seen the level of competition in his UFC career that he's going to see from Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes has had historically fantastic takedown defense. And I think that uh, Ryan's best way to win that fight is by getting it to the mat. I think the range of Reyes and the takedown defense is just going to be too much. Reyes has incredibly long range. He definitely has the reach advantage. And while Span can be, uh, is very explosive, I think Reyes will be able to deal with the blitzes with his range control and even uh, get some, some of his own counters off as well. Um, the third leg of my parlay, I'm going to go to our co main, and I have Dustin Poirier winning inside the distance. Um, Chandler absolutely has the ability to implement his wrestling and take Poirier down. He has an incredibly explosive double leg. However, I don't think he has the best control on the ground. We've seen in past fights, um, especially um, in his previous Bellator fights as well, where he creates these scrambles instead of... Uh, providing a lot of control on the, on the mat. And I think, I don't know that he'll be able to hold Dustin down. So while we may see him on top of Dustin for a round, I think he's gonna get back to his feet. And I think the chin of Chandler is definitely going to be tested. Dustin not only has power, but he's incredibly accurate with his boxing. And I think that's the, just the boxing on the inside, he's gonna end up clipping Michael Chandler. Last for my picks, 
I'm going to touch on the main event a little bit. This is such an interesting fight, and it's going to be incredibly exciting. I think uh, lately, people have kind of looked at Izzy as becoming a very safe fighter. I don't think Alex Pereira is going to allow that to happen. He is going to put the pressure on Izzy. This is going to be an exciting fight because Pereira is going to make it that way. If Izzy can control the distance and can slow the fight down, which he is one of the best in the world at, he controls the pace of the fight incredibly well. If he can do that, I think we're going to see Izzy um, win the decision um, or even possibly catching Alex on the way in. I do think Alex's best chance of winning is going to be by finish. It, but if he doesn't clip Izzy, I think Izzy has that ability to move in and out within the range even better than Alex does. And he also has the grappling advantage here. I know we don't typically see Izzy uh, wrestling offensively, but he also has incredibly high fight IQ. And I think he will 